while you were out. Anyone here impatient? <laughs> I heard Glenda laugh. But I was told yesterday to quit using her as an example. Quit picking on her. <laughs> Anybody else impatient? At least impatient when you think God should move? I know we're Methodists. We don't raise our hands, so I won't require it of you. Part of our good news, and thank you, Jason, for reminding us that today is, a well, it's the day after Epiphany. This is actually, you know, the day after the wise men delivered their gifts, but, you know, yesterday was the official day to take down Christmas decorations, and we did that at the Parsonage yesterday. If I seem to have trouble climbing these two steps today, that's why. But with that said, Christmas is about Emmanuel, God with us. And so it's good to see that Jesus had the same trials in ministry that we did. If you have ever been in a crisis situation where you represented the gospel, you represented the power of God, you were God's messenger, God's angel into that situation, and then you were surprised that the people, instead of rejoicing, said, how quick can you leave? Because that's what happened here with the Gadarene or the Gergesene demoniac. Jesus does this amazing thing where he drives out this thousand devils out of this guy. This guy that if you read before in Luke 8, basically terrorized the neighborhood. He was breaking chains and screaming and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It wasn't safe to go visit your mom and dad's grave because this crazy man was there. They'd probably been praying for years that God would move and drive that guy out of there. Jesus shows up, does that very thing in answer to their prayers. And what do they say to him? How quick can you leave? And they drive him out. And sometimes that still happens in the church. The church does what the people coming here crying and in tears want to have happen. Have happen. It happens. And then the people are like, I've never saw him again in church. It's while you were out. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we have to be patient. We have to show faith and be confident that said, well, that wasn't what I expected. I was faithful. And in this one, Jesus was faithful. The people had wanted that done. They wanted that guy delivered. He was delivered. Of course, it cost them a few head of cattle. Maybe that's why they drove him out. Maybe it was just too spooky. It's amazing to me that people talk about the power of God, and then when they encounter a real supernatural manifestation, it's like, no, that's not the God we want. Because they realize if God is that powerful and that real, there's other areas in my life he might just poke his finger into not just this crazy man. There might be some other things that he's dealing with. So Jesus, showing, demonstrating the very nature of God, gets in the boat and leaves. Okay, you want me to go? I'll go. Thankfully, in this instance, the demoniac himself, now delivered, now dressed, no longer letting his baggy pants hang down, however you picture <laughs> whatever he looked like, beforehand, he's now looks like, you know, an Ivy League college kid. And the people can hear that. You know, when, when Jesus was there and there was a thousand dead pigs floating in the water, that was just too shocking. But Jesus got in the boat, sailed past the dead pigs, said, let God work. Let my father work. And he worked through this testimony. And it made it so that when he returned, they welcomed him. David knew what that was like. David, went, as you heard in the 2 Samuel 5, when he was leading Saul's army, he was winning all the time. That's the very thing that made him a threat to Saul and caused him to be pushed out into the wilderness. The same way that Jesus was driven out. The pattern could be that way in your life. 
you represent into your family or into your workplace or whatever niche of Uvalde God has placed you, you're just a little too much sunshine. And people don't like They like the darkness. Remember, the Bible says that they like the darkness. But God is still at work. You know, we have that parable that the farmer plants, and while he sleeps, the seeds grow. First the ear, then the full head. Then, you know, harvest time. So my word to you as we start this new year, 2024, is to say there may be things you planted that will come to fruition now. People that rejected you previously that will receive you now. Or maybe that rejection is coming for you in this year. But do not be discouraged. Because Jesus wasn't discouraged. He left when he was asked. For some of you, leaving will be difficult. Because you just say, if I just give him one more bit of advice, that's going to be the turning point. Think about Jesus and look for the boat. And know that in the season, you will come back. And they will welcome you because of somebody else's testimony. So, while you were out, let us pray. Lord, we wish that you were like a genie and granted us the wishes and prayers instantaneously. But we see that didn't even happen to our Lord and Savior. So, Lord, let us be faithful. Let us do that thing for which you placed us in the situation. Let us leave if we're asked. Let us return in faith, knowing you were at work and are at work all the time. Lord, we, th we ask this for ourselves, for you lack nothing. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.